Good morning, everybody. This truly is a day that the Lord has made. I will come into his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I am just so happy to see you this morning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome Joyce Rapp, who is on the organ this morning. Uh, yes, absolutely. You know, we didn't have a whole lot of time to talk, but guess what I discovered? We went to the same high school in Mount Vernon, Ohio. Can you believe that? So she had me at hello, all right? And so I'm just so grateful that uh, she's with us today, and thank you, Fernando, for the introduction. Um, this is a wonderful day of celebration as we come to the place where we get to celebrate the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, all the other business that we may have to deal with today is irrelevant. Let's enter into worship. Let's clear our minds. Let's worry. Let's not us, let us not worry about the troubles that are at home. I promise you, when you leave, they'll be at the door waiting for you. So, so just relax and, and uh, enjoy and engage in service. When you're asked to read, read. When you're asked to pray, pray. When you're asked to sing, sing. And do that joyfully and with an open heart. And we're going to ask God to just direct our path today as we come together in communion with him and with one another. God bless you and let's enter into our time of worship. I hear an amen. 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 Good morning, New Beginnings. From all over New Beginnings, welcome. Uh, I have chosen to sit this morning, although my legs are stronger, I did not want to tempt fate. So I will be seated, but I'm asking those that can, please arise, and we will join together for our call to worship. God called Abraham and Sarah and promised to bless them. God called Isaac and Jacob as heirs of that promise. They too call in faith, God's God calls us to join them as heirs of the faithful. We come here in faith, assured by the hope that was fulfilled in our lively service. So in the confidence of this promise, we offer our voices with Fannie Mae's glorious, joyous message, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine.
And now we join together in our morning prayer. God of light and love, you take delight in your creation. Ignite our spirits to worship with sincerity. Illumine our minds with the truth of your word. Inspire our hearts to seek your treasure alone. That our hearts may be pure and our actions may be noble and just as we share your love. Through Jesus Christ, our hope and promise, we pray. Amen. You may be... So we learned a little song the other week uh, called, uh, I don't know what it's called, Oh, Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all the days of my life. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all the days of my life. Do that one more time. Oh, Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all the days of my life. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all the days of my life. Amen. Don't we have a lot to be thankful for today? You know, we woke up this morning reasonably in our right minds. Amen. You know, even though we might have an ache in our back, Roger, or in our hips and our knees, that, you know, we still had the strength to get up this morning and come to the house of God. And uh, a lot to be thankful for. You know, we made it through the week without anyone uh, within our church family passing, and, you know, and we're not experiencing that grief together. Now, there are some who have had losses, but we're going to pray for their strength. We thank the Lord that we haven't had a break-in in over a week or so. Amen. You know, we don't, we don't have something we have to fix as an emergency for, you know, for, for the moment. You know, we're just making it through. And preschool started and got off to a great start. Thank you, Ms. Josie. Let's give God a hand of praise. You know, just so many things. And Pastor Alex and Carrie, they have a day off today. That's something to rejoice about because we want to make sure that everyone just remains emotionally and mentally healthy along the way. Um, I'm just so grateful for each one of you as well. My wife and I, you know, just continue to pinch ourselves with how gracious and how kind and how loving you've been. I'm sure somewhere down the road we're not going to always agree, but, you know, I'm so grateful that we at least got a month in. Amen? Amen. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we're going to take our petitions before the Lord today, you know? Uh, that doesn't mean we have nothing to pray about. Uh, do you have something that you need to pray about today? This is just, you know, between you and God. If there's something you need to pray about today, could you just raise your hand where you are today? All heaven rejoices and sees what your needs may be. Amen. And now I'm going to take a moment that if you like to share what your prayer request is or you like to congregation to agree with you in behalf of a prayer request, at this time the floor is now open and you are welcome to share what that is. Yes, Lori. Yes. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Yes. James. Yes. Um, I will be traveling to RBA on the 15th of this month. RBA stands for Richmond, Virginia. Virginia is my home state, so I will be traveling there. I got some business I got to take care of over there, especially getting uh, uh, an amended, first amendment. 
Amen. So I pray for travel mercies and everything over traveling to get Grandma out of LA. Oh, that's a long trip. Amen. We're going to pray for your, your traveling mercies. Lord, in your mercy, yes. hear our prayers. Amen. Anyone else? Yes, Deb. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I saw a hand. Yes, Susan. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Yes. After heart surgery, your brother is doing well. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes. Well, I'm glad something held you up to be in the house of the Lord with us this morning. God bless you. And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes. Amen. Amen. For all the things that we're celebrating today, let's give God a hand of praise for his goodness. Amen. Amen. Yes, Bruce. For healing through COVID. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Sweet heart of prayer, sweet heart of prayer, that calls me from a world of care, and bids me at my Father's throne, Make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found and oft escape the tempter's snare by thy return, sweet heart of prayer. Most gracious God, we thank you, Lord, for this time, this precious time that we are able to come before your presence Lord, not only with thanksgiving, but Lord, with a great joy and a confidence of knowing that we come before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, we have celebrated, you know, Jesus Christ and who he is in our lives. And Lord, because of Jesus and his shed blood, you have given us authority to come before your presence in his name. And we can ask anything according, you know, to your wishes and to your power and glory. And so, Father, we present those prayer requests that have gone forth today. Lord, many of them are prayers of celebration and thanksgiving because, Lord, you opened a door that we could not see. You made a way. You made a path. Lord, you have proven once again that we are not traveling this life journey alone, but that you are with us in every way. But, Father, we also bring heavy concerns of sickness and illness Lord, where we have family members and loved ones, Lord, who uh, are struggling through a healing process. And we ask, Lord, that you will come like a balm in Gilead and you will be a healing 
power in their lives. Lord, those who are struggling with, um, with COVID, those who are trying to rebound from a stroke and others who are finding restoration and healing from back aches and knee pains and, and headaches and just carrying the burdens of life. We thank you, Lord, that you are a heart fixer, Lord. We had a praise report of, of uh, 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 a brother, a family member, Lord, who came through heart surgery. And Father, we're just so eternally grateful that you're mindful of us in the simple things of life. Lord, we ask today as we enter into this time of worship that, Father, our hearts will be right, that we will open our hearts, we'll open our minds. Lord, that not only will we be receptive to your word, but most importantly, we will be receptive to Jesus himself and where you want to make change in our character and in our heart uh, because we carry our hurts and our burdens. We ask that you will just come and you'll carry those things for us and that we will let them go. Father, we thank you for this church and what our future will be. We pray life and we speak life into all of our campuses. Lord, for the mission and the work that we do as those who come to get food and clothing. Lord, for those who bring their children to our preschool, for those, Lord, who just walk across our campuses, we ask, Lord, that you will give us a receptive heart to those who are different from us, Lord, who may not be from our persuasion, who may not be from our religious tradition. Lord, open our hearts that we might be receptive to whosoever will to let them come. So, Father, we ask that as we continue in this service today, that your sweet, sweet spirit will dwell with us and you will move us to the place that we should be in as we commune with you today. We thank you in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Our scripture this morning is only two verses. It's the voice of Luke in chapter 6, and it comes from a much longer passage headed with the words, give away your life. Hear this challenging message from the gospel. Why do you see a speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, friend, let me take that speck out of your eye when you yourself do not see the log in your own? You hypocrite. First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. For me, for you, for all the children of God, this is the word from God for us to reach to teach, to preach, and all joined in responding, thanks be to God. And now, Pastor, it's your opportunity to talk about taking off our mask. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear this one. That's not good. A pyramid is down. on a larger podium. I like to go to work when I get here. Um, and one of the things I want to take off since church is over is this robe, okay? <laughs> um, you know, somebody, I heard someone over, uh, overheard someone say, I thought you were quite casual for communion today. But as I walked in in my blue jeans and my shirt and my tennis shoes, um, and then I came out in the robe, and they said, okay, that's better. You, you know, you qualify today. Amen. Um, today, I want to talk to you from a, a subject called Take Off That Mask. Take Off That Mask. And um, I thank you, Don, for reading our scripture. Uh, but I'm going to start in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15, where the scripture reads, Beware of uh, false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. 
Hmm. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You know, there's nothing worse than pretentiousness. You know, pretending to be something that we're not, where, where outward, outwardly we give the, the presence that we're one thing, but inwardly we are something altogether different. Uh, oftentimes I use the example, uh, I believe that we should be congruent. Say congruent. Congruent. And congruent, what that means is that when you're, you are incongruent, when your public image is so different from your private image. That's a good place to say amen. Come on now. Uh, when your public image is distant from your private image, because what that causes is a lot of volatility in your life because you are trying to pretend to be one thing that you're not. So to become congruent, we need to be the same person. What you see is what you get. So who you are publicly and who I am privately must be the same person. Amen. So, you know, it's, it's hard to, to, to say that you're one thing, but turn out to be something else. There is a danger in aligning yourself with someone who is not what they say they are. And so Jesus said, watch out for these people because who they really are is something far different from who they appear to be. So I understand that a sheep is, harm, is a harmless animal. Uh, they do not prey on other animals. They're not chasing squirrels up the tree. They're not trying to run after the rabbits. They're not uh, in the, the food chain. They're, they're not trying to hunt down anyone along the way. They eat grass and not meat. Uh, a wolf, on the other hand, is something or some, something that, that kills and eats whatever it can, whenever it can, and the wolf is obviously something that is very dangerous. So you can be injured very quickly when you hang around people who appear to be one thing but turn out to be something altogether different. You can hurt yourself if you don't have discernment about who is really a wolf versus who is a sheep. Amen, walls. And so Jesus told us that there are some people who appear to be very religious. They look like they are one of the sheep. They dress the part. They look the part. They may even sound like sheep. Come on now. You know, they go, bah, come on, bah. But if they're not sheep, every once in a while they go, they growl. He said, I thought you were a sheep, but in actuality, you may be a wolf somewhere out there. But given time and opportunity, who they really are, somebody say who they really are, who they really are will be revealed and you may not like what you see. So in Mark chapter 12 and verse 38, he said unto them in his doctrine, Beware of the scribes which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplaces and the chief seats in the synagogues and the uppermost rooms at feasts which devour widows' houses and for pretense make long prayers. These shall receive greater damnation. So you cannot pretend to be holy and then be something altogether different because there is a price to pay before God for being pretentious and misrepresenting who Christ is. So when you read the Gospels, you will find a common thread with Jesus. He does not like people, or should I say, he deals harshly with people who are one thing but are actually something else. Jesus didn't really, he dealt harshly with people who wore masks, who were pretentious. And here's why. Because people who wear masks create confusion in the church. That's right. You didn't hear that. The, the, those who wear masks, they create confusion in the church. Things could go very well. 
But there's always someone that finds a problem. There are some people who are never satisfied, never happy, never content. You know, we could have a perfect service, but the picture on the wall was crooked. And therefore, they could not even begin to enter worship because they were fixed and had a fixation on the one minute little thing that caused disruption. They misrepresent the world, who Jesus is, and what living for him is really all about. This confusion causes those people who need salvation to be turned away from the church because they find something worse than in their own situation. In other words, people sometimes are repulsed by church because they don't like seeing the hypocrisy that comes out in church. <laughs> Pretending to be one thing when we are actually something altogether different. So Jesus told a parable. He said in Luke chapter 6, verse 41 through 42, and I'm going to read it again, And behold, and why beholdest thou the mote or the splinter that is in your brother's eye, but perceiveth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Either how canst thou say to the brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in your own eye. Thou hypocrite, cast our first beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the mote that is in your brother's eye. Can you imagine a person walking around with a beam in their eye? Could you imagine you can't get anything done because you can't see? First of all, you can only see out of one eye, and then you're carrying this big beam around, and nobody, nobody, everybody sees that you have a beam except you. I hear Jesus saying today, take off the mask. Stop pretending to be something that you're not. It's better to be real. It's better to be honest. Honest with yourself and honest with others, and most importantly, be honest with God. Because you can pretend, we can pretend to be something that we're not, but you can fool some of the people some of the time, and some of the people all the time, but you can't fool God. Anytime, you know, God knows our troubles, our struggles, and this is why you hear Jesus over and over telling people, here it is, to not judge one another. He knew that if people in the church were to judge one another, that the person being judged may, may start acting like nothing was wrong in order to keep other people from judging them. So instead of coming to church and being vulnerable and being authentic, we like to hide and pretend that everything is okay when it's not okay. And I'm learning as I grow older and as I mature in my spiritual walk that the house of God should be a place that I can be authentic with my hurt and with my pain and be vulnerable and let people know, you know, they say, well, how, how, how are you? Well... I'm good under the circumstances. Well, what are you doing under there? See, God knows our troubles. God knows that we, in our humanness, we have difficulties. We're all here not only because we accept Jesus Christ together, but we're all here because he has made us victorious over something in our lives. And that is the reason why we come and we celebrate because God has proven himself to be such a good God in our lives. Give God a hand of praise for that today. See, listen, if we act like nothing is wrong, we'll never get healed. Because the first part of healing is admitting that I have a problem. Come on now. You know, I, I, I have a coffee cup that, that says, you know, I'm not bossy, I'm just always right. <laughs> <laughs>
you know, and I recognized, you know, when, when, when I got that, my family gave it to me, by the way, and, and, and I recognized, man, I need to check myself because if the perception is that, that I think I'm always right, then we have a problem in our ability to communicate with one another. So if we pretend like everything is hunky-dory in our lives when really we need the church to pray for us and support us, then we will never be benefited by the love of the family of God. So we have to be open and we have to be willing to share. And so when guests and when visitors and strangers come within our doors, they don't have to assimilate to our false holiness. But they can come in the way they are and we're going to receive them because everybody has a story. Everyone has been through a journey. I don't know about you, but I've had some heavy burdens to bear. And if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know how I would have made it. I don't know how I would have stayed in my right mind. But God is faithful in all things. And can I say today, there is a beauty in being who you really are. When you are genuine, God can use you. And if who you really are would prevent him from using you, then at least he would now, he can take and mold you and work with you and heal you to the point that he can use you. So hear me, your life doesn't have to be perfect for God to use you. Isn't that great? Your life doesn't have to be perfect. God doesn't call the qualified. God qualifies the call. But I have to be honest, and I have to be real. So when I read the scriptures, I find God using some pretty savory individuals. Some of them are liars, and some of them are thieves. Some of them were drunks. Some were adulterers. Some are murderers. One man who God used to write most of the New Testament had actually been a murderer and torturer of Christian men, women, and children. I'm not sure if it gets any worse than that. But in the day that Saul had a coming to Jesus or coming to God moment where he took off his mask and his religious piety, God said, now I can use you. I can use you because what I've discovered in my own life is that God will break you down in order to build you up. Now, some of us think we've aged out of this process, but you haven't, okay? You know, the adage, you know, I, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it anyway because I'm going to be real. My father used to say, a hard head makes a soft behind. <laughs> you see, at some point, it's time to take off the suit and tie and show them who Jesus really is. Or maybe it's not a suit or a tie for you. Maybe it's your pride. Take off your pride. Or maybe it's your pain. You know, take off your pain. Be vulnerable. Show it. Maybe it's our prosperity. Sometimes, even though it's nice for God to provide for us and we have what we need, sometimes we need to realize that every blessing we have comes from God. I know you think you're talented, but you're not that talented. You got to mix it with the power of God and what an awesome opportunity it is to change people's lives. Or maybe we have to take off our edumacation. Come on now, you didn't hear what I said. Our edumacation. You know, some of us, you know, we carry these letters behind our name, but they don't mean anything without the power of God. And at some point, it's time to take off the mask. Somebody say, take off the mask. Take off the mask that the real you, as ugly as I know the real me is, I got to stop hiding and let the Holy Spirit heal me and cleanse me and show our family and our neighbors who Jesus Christ really is. Because for our families, especially our families who know us, if he can change you, maybe he can change me. I don't know about you, but I want to be real. I want to be honest with God. 
and with you. I don't know if everybody knows this or not, but in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, and I'll just read it, you don't have to go there, tells us that the great God of the universe, he stepped down off the throne of heaven, took off his royal robes and clothed himself in weakness of human flesh so that he could reach people. We want this church to be approachable. We want our church to be accessible to anyone who will walk through our doors. Masks, you see, come in so many different forms. Jesus mentioned the scribes and their long clothing. They loved to dress up and put on the image of religion. They thought that they, if they wore them on the outside, that would make them look holy. They thought, you know, how they looked told people how holy they were. Inwardly, Jesus said, they devour widows, widows' houses, but out outwardly they pretend to represent the kingdom of God. That's what I love about Jesus. I don't have to put on some mask in order to be loved by him. He loves me whether I do good or whether I do bad because I'm not saved or lost by one act in my life, but I am a work in progress. You are a work in progress, and that's why I love him, because he has not cast us aside just because we've made mistakes in our lives. You see, if you're not real, you'll never reach people. I love meeting new people along the way. I love meeting strangers. And as I told you, I get right up in their business, Fernando. I'll walk to the grocery store and say, oh, I see that you bought so-and-so. You know, how is that? You know, and they're looking at me like, why are you looking in my cart? <laughs> what, why, why are you all up in my business? Or, or I'll meet a stranger on the street. And, and, and um, you know, we were driving yesterday. And, uh, and the only reason I didn't do what I wanted to do is because my wife was in the car with me. And... Uh, <laughs> And we were following, you know, this uh, Oldsmobile Cutlass, and it was lowered, you know, and uh, it had the spoke wheels, and it had these three brothers inside of it all with bald heads and tattoos on their heads, you know, this kind of thing. And I wanted to pull up to the side and say, hey, man, hey, I love your car, you know, you know just, just because, but, but I know that would have freaked her out. So... <laughs> You remember that story, huh? And, 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 and these are the kinds of things that if people recognize how genuine and how loving you are, I don't care who they are, their life can be changed as they experience and see Jesus Christ working in our life. Let's take the mask off and let people see the real us for who we are. Because the real us and the power of God pours in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Watch not only your life change, but the life of so many people around us will change as we take our mask off. That's what brings us to this place of communion. To the great thanksgiving. Because it's a time in which I can shed myself of all those things that I carry and I give them to Jesus because he paid it all for my sins, my past, my present, and my future. I'm going to invite Donna at this time to come forward and sing and then we'll enter into our time of Holy Communion.
into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Before we enter into the service of word and table, I want to invite you just to open the eyes of your heart. And uh, we're going to ask the Lord to do that as we sing together so that you don't get too comfortable. Those who can stand, I'm going to invite you to stand and sing with us. Open the eyes of our heart. seated. I invite you to turn to page 12 in your hymnals if you need to follow and or as we enter into our time of word and table. Christ our Lord invites us to his table. All who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. The confession and pardon, if you have it, let's read together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. On page 13, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy. 
You are holy and blessed in your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from the slavery to sin and death, and made us, made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, This is the loaf that represents the body of Jesus Christ. Christ was taken to the cross, and he was beaten, and he was broken in our behalf. His body, he took our suffering, he took our pain. And today we are able to join with him in great celebration for the sacrifice that he made on Calvary's cross. And this too, the cup, the cup that represents his blood, the blood that was shed for me, back on Calvary. As we take of this body and we take of this blood today for the remission of our sins, this gives us the great opportunity to eternal life, that no matter what we've ever done in our past, that God has covered us through Jesus Christ and his broken body and his shed blood. Today, we ask, Lord, as we offer this up before you, that you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, will bless it and Lord, as we partake of it today, that we will recognize that our sins are forgiven and that we can leave this place today in confidence knowing that you have not only been with us, but you are present with us and you dwell within us. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen and amen. Today we have servant leaders who have been asked to come and assist us in sharing the sacrament today. So we're constantly adjusting, okay? And this adjustment is that um, today, instead of giving you those plastic cups, you know, that you got to peel back and they taste so badly, uh, we decided that we wanted to uh, step up our game a little bit. And we have both the body of the bread that is broken and we have the individual cups. We're asking that you only touch the cup that matters to you. Amen. And for those who are still interested in intention, we will provide that I will be here on the side as well, and we will share both the body and the uh, blood of Jesus Christ. At this time, the table is now open, and I'm gonna ask Vic to come over here with me. Come over here. And you can go to either station. You're welcome to come. I'm gonna ask you to hold that for me. Yeah. This is Christ's body broken for you. And this is 
Christ's blood shed for you. This is Christ's body broken for you. This is Christ's body broken for you. It's not easy. This is Christ's body broken for you. This is Christ's body broken for you. This is Christ's body broken for you. This is Christ's body broken.
Okay. Oscar and Josh, I'm going to invite you to come down and take communion if you don't mind. I have a script this morning. This is not in the script. In direct reaction to our sermon this morning. For seven years, my wife went through a very, very difficult time with her work. We have no family here. This church was our family. The quiet, strong support that was given to her during that time allowed us to live through that. She didn't really take off her mask till later, but you did. You were the support. Without you, uh, we would not have survived in any meaningful way. That is what this church does. It is now time to present our tithes and offerings before God. Your offerings to New Beginnings can be given through check, website, nbie.org, or through texting. These are the words you hear every week. And now, now let me enter into the room that Pastor Anthony has carried us and created with his letter to all. It has been in our e-blast the past two weeks and in, his, in a document available on the podium in the narthex. Each of us of the laity of this church have been challenged to do four things. One, commit to increasing your volunteer hours by one hour per week. Two, commit to being a participant in a weekly group. And let me explain that. This is a weekly Bible study group, as so the card says. But any small group that exists within in 
NDIE has been created and serves in the gospel. That's what we're all about, doing ministry as taught to us through the study and practices of Jesus' teaching. So food ministry, prayers and squares, blanket brigade, the choir, community groups, they are all created and find their spirit by the word. So find or start one that lights your fire. Three, commit to increasing your present giving by 10% or begin your giving in a regular way. And four, commit to being open to change and trust the process. Here's a quote that came to me this week. Change may not always bring, bring, change may not always bring growth. But there is no growth without change. We are providing you here, Joyce is passing out a new commitment card just created by Gail and me this week. They're the first steps in this change that Anthony has set us on. As they're being passed out, let me offer a short prayer. May God find his way from the words of quest found here into the souls of those who read these cards. May we begin a new attitude about giving, and that is returning thanks for the grace and spirit we have been given freely to be good stewards and use what we have to preach our glorious sermons. Amen. Please take some prayer time to consider your renewed commitment this morning and understand we are at the sunrise of a new day and we have been given that blessed assurance that with prayer and love we can transform the world. Joyce and I have prayed about our response and have filled out our card and I will go over to the box and I will drop that in this morning. It is our symb symbolic promise to respond to all four of these new callings. For the harvest of the Spirit, thanks be to God. For the good will we all inherit, thanks be to God. For the wonders that astound us, for the truths that still confound us. Most of all, that love has found us. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 The time is now yours. The offering box is open.
I hope you realize how blessed we are in the quality of music that goes forth here at New Beginnings. Amen and amen. That's all right. That took a lot off my plate when I knew that Fernando was here. Amen. <laughs> amen. Uh, our next steps for the week. Um, this coming week in the e-blast, you will have a schedule of the Bible studies that will uh, come out for the month of September. Uh, after meeting with a few people on last week, I will be starting a Bible study uh, entitled How to Grow a Healthy Multi-Ethnic Church. Okay, We're going to take a biblical view of what it is to grow our church and to work in our communities and what God would have us to do and how to go about that. Uh, as Don had stated, you don't have to be in that study. We have so many studies and so many groups and so forth, but we do need you active and involved. Uh, we thank you, you know, for your sacrifice. We can't do this work without you. And I'd just like to take a moment to say thank you once again. Um, as we prepare to close, I invite you to go to hymn number 357, Just As I Am. Please stand. <clears throat> Verses one, two, and five. I'm inviting you to turn to your neighbor that's next to you or beside you. And I'm going to invite you to repeat after me from Romans chapter 15 and verse 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope 
by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Yeah, we're coming back after that. 